This is one of those areas where basically everyone is interested in it. Uh, all scientists, non-scientists, when presented with the idea, the possibility of mind-to-mind -mind communication, of precognition, these kinds of ideas, who cannot be interested in this? The, so what's different in my career is that, unlike a lot of scientists who get interested in it but then are turned off by the relationship between these kinds of so-called paranormal phenomena and its relationship to entertainment, science doesn't like to be too closely associated with that because it raises questions about credibility. But I always found that these phenomena were more interesting than problems with credibility. So I simply I worked in conventional science for about 10 years and uh, as a hobby was conducting experiments to see whether some of these things might be true. It probably took about five years before I convinced myself that there was something real going on. But once I was convinced, it became the kind of topic that you can't set aside because holy smoke. The first series of studies that I did were, were at Bell Laboratories. And they all involved the relationship between mind and matter. And they were stimulated by a laboratory lore which is formalized in the terms of Murphy's Law, which is that if anything can go wrong, it will, and usually at the worst possible time. Now, when I was working in Bell Labs, this is part of the Bell system back then, if one of the big switching machines went down, the telephone traffic machines, if it went down for a second, you'd lose a million dollars of revenue. That's why they use triple redundant machines to prevent that. And those machines would go down too. So there's a lot of effort to, to see what causes a triply redundant machine to fail and how can we stop it. When you, when you go through this long list of, of reasons, you end up with maybe a 1% left over, which nobody knows. They don't know why it fails. Even the human factors are taken out and it still fails. So I'm attracted to the residue because it says what, whatever that is, is something that we don't understand yet. Maybe it's interesting. So I knew from the literature of parapsychology that people were doing experiments involving uh, the effect of intention on random events. Intention would apparently cause order to appear where it shouldn't be. So I started doing experiments on that at Bell Labs, on myself and my colleagues, and we got results that confirmed what we had read in the literature, that the randomness went away. So, of course, this, this was the first hook and it took, it took a while for me to believe that it was really true. And then I started going to conferences and presenting this kind of work and so on, and I caught the attention of people in the U.S. government who were doing this kind of research, at the time, secret research. And a few years later, I was invited to participate in that program. People were taking very seriously the idea that uh, these strange psychic effects were real, and studying it now in the context of big science, meaning well-trained, conventionally, conventionally trained academics from a wide variety of disciplines in a real science shop. Uh, the people who were funding this were the defense intelligence and central intelligence and a huge long list of usually three-letter names. So at one time in the U.S. we had a, um, a ballistic missile program where you would put missiles on uh, on train tracks and you keep moving them all the time with the idea that you'd fool the enemy so that they couldn't bomb the silo because there is no silo it's moving so they want to know in that context could you outguess where the train is going to be if the government were some sort of an entity that we can consider as rational then it is true that, that it, it would be very likely that there would be programs, active programs, looking at applications of psychic phenomena. But I think there's every indication that, that we know historically in the present as well that government does not act rationally. Government tends to be reactive, not anticipatory. 
uh, and it doesn't often make decisions which are in its best interest or even the right technical decisions. And of course, this is true even in industry. Oftentimes in industry where money was at stake, if you made the right decision or not, the technical people would be asked to make the best technical decision they could, and it would be overridden for some kind of political reason. So this is not rational. It, it's something else. We now know that around the time that the U.S. had its secret program, that the Russians had its own secret program. And to this day, the Chinese probably have a program, and who knows who else. So part of the fear in any kind of race, any military race, is that the others are ahead of you, so it keeps pushing you to go ahead. Now we're beginning to understand that uh, nobody knows what's going on. Crisis breeds opportunity. Are you waiting to be safe or will you make yourself free?